Just saying. <laughs> Quickly start the podcast so I can play through. <laughs> It's spot on accurate. I wasn't to get there. Wow. Wow. Well, welcome to the show, guys. She done some more research. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was uh, was that you, Dan, or was that someone else that you wanted to be? Someone what the uh, Dan got a garage band this week. I, I did. Oh, well, I know I got a new phone this week, and um, now I've entered the, the modern world. I uh, well, I basically yeah, now I've got a touch screen that actually works. So yeah, Dan got a got a garage band last week and a new phone. But more importantly, dun 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 dun. dun, dun. I'm Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Luke. I'm Dan. It's all right. He's no longer tapping the table. He's tapping the phone. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. yeah. Now I've got a phone. Now I've got a phone to tap. Scrape the phone. Yeah. I need a little cut out from the table so I just can't reach it. Well, can't reach your phone. Who went out the table just so I know. <laughs> that's, that's a reach in itself. What are, what are you doing with the Purell? I want to get some hand sanitizer in the YouTube. Alright. Yeah. He's, he's just keeping our content clean. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask a quick question? Why, 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 why did you take the, Why did you. That's going to be. What kind of. What kind of <laughs> What kind of like house have you lived in that you don't use the squeezy? Oh yeah, no, go on then. You put it back in. You use that then. <laughs> oh. FYI, the viewers at home, Dan's about to fail using the squeezy top. Of the it doesn't work. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Might have just felt a little scrape along the table as he reached for it. F- fair enough. <laughs> it's all about the dip these days. <laughs> okay. So, um, ah, what are we talking about today? You you've been watching Narcos, I hear, Gabriel. Yeah, I was going to talk about hand sanitizer for a little bit longer. Oh, really? I felt okay. so staged. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> You've been watching Narcos, I hear. About <laughs> five minutes ago, before we started, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan's been off for two weeks, and already he's forgotten what, what conversation is. Yeah, well, you know, when, you, when you're at home just with, like, two one-year-olds, the conversation's normally a one-way street. Yeah, but <laughs> think about all the sick banter you have. Well, at home, there's not a lot of sick banner. It's uh, it's me usually staring at Hey Dougie and trying to get in the minds. What of about people. actual sickness banter? Blah. What about narcos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we could get on topic if you really wanted. I didn't know that you watched narcos. Oh well. What happened with that? What a great segue. How <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it you or was it Ped who said narcos as well? Uh, I think uh, it might have been. It was probably me. I it's think it was. I, think I it don't was. remember what I tell you to watch. I just know you're going to do it and we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm so dependable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have to chase you up. True that. Well, there was a lot of chasing in Narcos. Ooh. Yeah, hey, segue. Um, so yeah, it's a drama series based on the true story of Pablo Escobar, Colombian cocaine king. It sounds like you're about to try and go into a rap here. Uh, Pablo yeah. Escobar. Like you were trying to fit it to a beat in your own head then or something. <laughs> well, seeing if I could drop some Netflix bars. Yeah, oh. go for it. You can do it. Pablo Escobar. What far? Uh, oh, crap. Grabs <laughs> <laughs> a big car that car. <laughs> Crumbles under pressure, doesn't he? Yeah. I'm, I'm not one for on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we do this podcast every week. But yeah, um, a solid little show. I really enjoyed it. I watched it three times. You mean you watched the whole show three times? No, nah, just the pilot three times. Okay. Really? Well, yeah, because I forgot what happened after the second time. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I was like, oh, yeah, this is sick. The second time I was writing notes for Dan, so that if he ever wanted to do video editing, he could get, like, pictures of moustaches. Spoilers, there's a lot of moustaches. Pictures of moustaches. So many moustaches. <laughs> uh, and I, then the third time was like, oh, man, well, you know, it's been a couple of days since i watched Narcos, and I don't want to forget what happened, because of what happened. I think the funniest thing you said there is Dan doing video editing. <laughs> Hey, have you seen my garage back? <laughs> <laughs> you know they hit one key. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> when, you, when you're doing an entry for ODB. <laughs> but yeah, kick us off with the pilot. Alright, well, so we're in 1980s Colombia. Classic. We've got a narrator who's very American and kind of film noir Because you see, he's a narrator and he's got to tell you mysterious stuff. Actually, a narrator role, like 
someone, a character, like, narrating. Are we, are we it, inside the head of a character like in the show? He's, 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 he's a character narrating, yeah. Um, but we don't meet him properly <coughs> um, for, like, a good five minutes. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, it kind of first off by saying, like, oh, it's 1980s, the way they had to do surveillance was obviously like old school giant flip phones. Um, flip phones? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> flip <laughs> phones, <laughs> flare planes. Did they have flip phones in the 80s? Well, okay, maybe brick phones. The, the, the show. They were huge in yeah. the show. Big old phones, planes flying over. Anyway, they're like, oh, we're going to do a sting. They're all at this club. We're going to go to the karaoke club and sort them out. And so, you know, in typical 80s Miami Vice style, neon lights, some Colombian guys being all 30 at the club, midnight. Not you, know, you know what, I, 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 I might be moving to that. All, all, I, all I can think of is Archer in my head. <laughs> That's what I've got. It's, a, it's a little bit. And then kind of all the, de- the drug enforcement agents pile out of the vans with their like bulletproof vests and their shotguns. They completely mow the club down like it's a massacre, right? And the next morning he's like, but don't call not, me. Not of dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> despite all, despite all the moves I was dropping just that now, while like, beatbox. It sounds like Gabe's recounting it from his own memory. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, oh right, I was there. You should have been there, right? They just mowed them down, I, right? I don't massive. I'm just, in my, all, in second my time, I was like, oh yeah, I can't remember. Third time, I lived it. All, all I can see in my head is Gabe, like twenty years older, with a cowboy hat and a mustache and a big old cigar, going. No, it, 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 was, it was the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> we had flip phones, but none of us had ever seen random phones. In the two thousand eighties, we didn't have the World Wide Web. <laughs> Memes weren't even a thing. Then, yeah, that well, would game would be lost. Yeah, I know. I think my heart skipped the beat, guys. Don't joke about that shit. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Carry on. Tell us about this so, yeah, glowing guy. But don't call me a bad guy just yet. And then the title drops, and you know, I thought that was cool because it suddenly launched into kind of like sad jazz blues. I was like, oh, well, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So this guy's just like murdered loads of people and then he says, don't call me a bad guy. Yeah, but don't call me the bad guy just, yeah. I feel like he's really hoping that objective morals are... <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Anyway, that's the hook. And then it's basically a flashback on how cocaine got big in America in the 80s. That's like the entire episode. Noses. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, fe- they featured. So, yeah. And moustaches. Um... <laughs> There's a little bit about how... (laughs) (laughs) It was a (laughs) cost-saving tool. Sometimes, when you just couldn't be bothered to reach, you just had to keep it close to hand. (laughs) Also, it acts as a nice talc for the beard. Yeah, Yeah, but then you've got to oil it. Beard talc. (laughs) Cocaine beard talc. (laughs) It promotes growth. (laughs) But I'm just saying, but solid solution to the beard problem. What, rub cocaine? <laughs> yeah. I didn't realise beards were a problem in your eyes. <laughs> I don't have a beard, so I don't know. Would you grow a moustache? I could see you have a moustache. If I could. <laughs> I couldn't see him growing one, but... Oh, yeah, but can't miss any of those. Oh, no, <laughs> no, can no can one be. on here will even see you. You never know. Well, what, even a video editing might take off. <laughs> the biggest joke of this podcast will be... Dan may be video editing. That's some shade that wasn't deserved. (laughs) It's more a case of it won't happen. Well, I I think I think you jump into conclusions. I mean, (laughs) I'm going to grow a mustache. Get keep myself a stash. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to imagine you with a mustache now, Dan. I shaved this off. I basically got one. You look like one of the guys from Narcos. I look like Balf. I look like Balf did last year. Yeah, not from that Yeah, so um, there was a little bit about how people were thought to be good guys back in the day, like Nixon, and then he wasn't so great. Wait, 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 who, who thought Nixon was a good guy? The people who voted him in. <laughs> right. <laughs> you weren't around in the 1980s, Dan. You don't know. I was born in 85. Yeah, but you were a kid. Yeah, I hit the clubs early. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't argue with that. So anyway... <laughs> Um, this one guy called Cockroach, I kid you not, um, he survives a firing squad in Peru um, and then sneaks into Colombia because he's like, oh, well, you know, now I've got the recipe for this cocaine stuff. I just have to smuggle it to Colombia and I'll get rich by selling it for profit. And so then we meet like a bunch of uh, smugglers and like one of them's like, oh, yeah, he's too chill. He's not the Goldilocks one for you. And then the other one, because apparently emeralds are a rough trade to smuggle, even 
Columbia. Columbus. What? Columbia. What are, you, are, you tra- are you asking us what the name he's of the country to, is? Yeah. He's trying to translate his own meme code. <laughs> <laughs> so Columbus was the guy that found America second. Yeah. Columbia's the country. Cool. I had a 404 <laughs> not found moment. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, I do think your brain probably worked like a search engine. And <laughs> Canada is the country above America. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, cool. that's true. Everyone knows Canada. And then we meet Pablo Escobar. So he's the not too crazy murderous, but also not too not too sweet. And we kind of <laughs> <laughs> we meet him right. He was the perfect, <laughs> he was a perfect <laughs> smuggler. <laughs> he was just he was right. Pablo Escobar is not too sweet. <laughs> He was just describing his product. <laughs> it's the guy that basically run the Colombian country for drug trafficking. Yeah, but this is when it, when he was just smuggling like cigarettes and I think stereos. It wasn't very clear. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> so anyway, when we meet him, he gets stopped at border patrol because border patrol are like, "We aren't cops. You can pay off, man." And when he gets out of the car, and despite the fact that there is no internet, he knows all their names because. You know, it's gonna seem like a super criminal crim crim. Uh, what? <laughs> you are crumbling today. <laughs> you are crumbling. It was gonna <laughs> seem like a super criminal crim crim. <laughs> I've got a I've got a feeling that you you wouldn't make it in the criminal underworld. <laughs> I know all your names because I'm a I'm a crim crim. Yo yo boys. Was it throwback to Luke Cage? Pat pat pat. Yeah. Uh, let me try some of this product. It's not too sweet. I'm crying. <laughs> right. We haven't even made it like a quarter of a way through the show. <laughs> crim crim. He's the cream of the crop. <laughs> oh, get out. <laughs> okay. C- continue. <laughs> I might need a minute. You really will look at him. Should I just take your notes and just start reading? Like, I'm not sure. I'm going to say cream cream. I'm not sure I'm going to read this. <laughs> I've literally got one point in here which just says 22.43 and 36.47 moustache. <laughs> it's for when he's video I think, I, think, I think actually that's a biblical reference. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What is going on? Drug dealer. <laughs> I think I remembered how to breathe, guys. I should be okay, fine. Okay, well, well, quick. Just, just, just while, you're, while you're catching your breath. Like, so... <laughs> Okay, so Pablo Escobar, he knows their names, and he's like, I make deals for a living. He's got eyes everywhere, and he's like, oh, well, you know, your kids just learn how to drive a car. Wouldn't she like a nice stereo? I got one in the back of my truck. And then he was like, and this was a, was a line I thought was great, especially in, I think it was Colombian or Spanish. I'm not sure if there's a difference. I'm sorry, Netflix in the world. Um, he, he pulls out a pistol, and he goes, plata or plomo, which is like silver or bullets, or silver or lead. But the way he delivers it, he's like, plata or plomo. Like, so oh, basically oh, like shit. money or bullets. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when we're like, oh, snap. And then he, he meets the cockroach. Yeah. And who, I kid you not, says that, oh, it's a digestive aid about cocaine. <laughs> I don't really know quite what, sweet. I feel like he was getting crim something crim. Yeah. <laughs> crim de la crim de la Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and okay. then from from all that we then cut to our American dude who's been a writer and he's like back then the major drug bust was like a sandwich bag full of weed kind of no big deal um, and that's when I put all the moustache taglines in because I realised holy smoke is there are a lot of moustaches in this show Yeah. and a lot of guys who can like pull them off as well I'm not going to lie um then after we get to know our drug enforcement agent, American blonde hero guy. What's his name? Um, like, <laughs> <laughs> he just wasn't that interesting. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny FBI. 
Why didn't you just describe I'm picturing four, like the original four. Like yeah. The shorter four. hair, but yeah, basically. Hero blonde hair, like guy. Oh yeah, it was Steve Murphy. What a boring name. That is a really boring name. See, yeah. see what I mean? His name isn't Pablo Escobar or the cockroach. I'm pray- Do your notes actually say like blonde haired super cop or something like that? Yeah. Like you've not even Basically, He Man with a badge. <laughs> <laughs> Manly Man. Um. Well, the thing, okay, the thing about Escobar is that he's just a bit of a, like a, a hero a figure in the underworld, isn't he? Like when you think of Pablo Escobar, you think he's a really cool guy. That ran his own little like. I'll say this empire. much: actual photos of him are a little bit less flattering than the actor. No, no, yeah, yeah, they are. Like in real life, he was he was brutal. He was he ran Colombia. Like he, he killed. I mean, he fought against the government. He, he basically had a, it was a civil war. Like he was not a very nice guy. So that's that's why I find it quite funny when you're like not too sweet. But well, I think it was sort of we haven't gotten to that part yet. Yeah. So we're still at the part where he's setting up like little cocaine. I don't know thing. Because it comes to him as like a kind of a brick of putty, and they do a thing to it, and then it becomes a powder. Not chemist idea. <laughs> 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 yeah. So like a brick, they do a thing, and it's a powder. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Breaking Bad? <laughs> no, no. That's, you know what? It's, I'm sure they're related, but not not that much. I um, think we need a little really segment. scientific in parts of words, like beakers and yeah. Thompson burner yeah. distillery. They had an oven, I think. That was. <laughs> <laughs> it was called the kitchen. <laughs> anyway. We need a little jingle. Gabe explains science. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. To make the cocaine. Um, and then we, we kind of meet the people who set up like the first smuggling routes. Or heavy air quotes on that one. One of them is, goes through like uh, just the beginning with like five kilo um, little bundles in his jacket lining. Mm. And then they started doing things like... Um, Hiding it in aeroplanes, um, in fish, in coffee. Uh, in there, fish? There were shots of like little <laughs> cocaine pellets being stuffed into fish. You know, that would really perk up sushi bars. Um, <laughs> but then there was, there was a proper moment it's where not actually rice. <laughs> when they do the seaweed rice, <laughs> they do something to it. <laughs> <laughs> they do something to it. First, it comes as like this big one. Yeah, and then they do a thing, and then it's like this powder, and then it turns into tiny pellets. I I can't keep up. Um, <laughs> but so so enthusiastic. I I can't keep up. I was ha- I was having a cracking time watching it for everyone who's listening. As much as I might not be sounding it right in heart, it's great. I might not have been laughing as much as these guys, but I was proper such into it. Such a little cream cream. <laughs> there was a moment where I was like, oh snap, this gets a bit dark too. Because um, a bunch of young women came in, and this guy with a lion, who was like setting up all the smuggling routes, I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll pay you like a thousand dollars to swallow 50 pellets as mules. And then he went up, up to two who were like heavily pregnant, and he's like, I'll give you 1500 if you swallow 80, because they never check pregnant women. So that was like how I guess drug mules got started. And well, I, I imagine like they existed before, but obviously he's probably he's used it in a very specific he way. standardised it, didn't he? <laughs> 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 and it's, yeah. there's, there's documentation you can download now from, yeah. from Escobar on how to properly get through boarding. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like how many you're allowed if you're a certain weight? Five enough. per sandwich bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> no, more than, no more than ten on a flight. <laughs> but it was something like. Um, <laughs> Or she would experience chafing. Yeah. <laughs> Grim. Um, but yeah, Steve Steve Murphy, copy cop cop, put it. Um, Call you the criminal crim crim, and I'm your copy cop cop. <laughs> <laughs> You're on one today. <laughs> the creative voices are flowing from that <laughs> side of I'm room. just keeping it brief, boys. <laughs> but yeah, as he explained it, they weren't really looking for cocaine, they were going to get loads through. Even like stuffing it into planes, they moved the labs out to the rainforest, and um, it was around this point in the episode, about two thirds of the way in, that the guy cockroach from the beginning is starting to freak out a bit because he's like, "I think I'm being had." It's only then that he realizes that. You mean by Escobar? Yeah, it's only then he realizes he's stuck out there making all the cocaine and not really getting much of a profit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the other smugglers want to get in on the action, so they're like, "Oh, this is a profitable business." Um, so they all meet by a poor house because it's 1980s. Um, have a little chat. Um, 
Cockroach still freaks out a bit more, tries to make a power play. Escobar shuts him down. Um, and then we jump to 1980s Miami Vice. Um, at which point, um, Steve Murphy gets to make his first... Actually, I think his name's Brady. Um, well, I, <laughs> that says in my notes, Brady, I was, I was, I was gonna say, else. I was going to say, surely they just call him Murph. <laughs> but, uh, that was what Gabe calls him, Murphy Murph Murph. <laughs> Well, anyway, blonde cop, <laughs> blonde cop, Mick protagonist, or whatever we're gonna call him. <laughs> Shoot him at shoot first. Well, he, he, he shoots. He accidentally shoots. Well, he doesn't. So there are some kids on the run. They got like guns. Pat, 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 and he shoots <laughs> one of them. What they're shooting at the cops? Or yeah, they're, they're, just, shoot, they're, just... they're shooting at the cops, right? Because they got their drugs, and you know they're like, "Nah, you can't get us." And then he, he shoots a teenager, and the teenager died, and he's super sad about that. Um, <laughs> You explain the grieving process, really. Well. And we get we get some proper like film noir shots as he goes home, and then his wife is um, even more sad because one of the drug mules, well, because she's married to an American cop and they're always sad. No, well, I'm sure that's happened a few times, but um, <laughs> no, she's sad because um, she works as a nurse, because of course, um, and that day one of a uh, pregnant woman died and she'd just flown in and it turned out that two of the split pellets like um, she was packing 11 ounces of cocaine mm -hmm. which in metric terms is somewhat um, <laughs> and, <laughs> what you want and anyway two, two of the pellets split inside of her so she had 12 grams of coke all up in her system oh, so yes. did she do? yes okay. funnily enough yes she did and she died from the overdose so um, McProtago and <laughs> his wife yeah. are both super miffed and are all like, right, we're gonna, we're fighting cocaine now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's put our lives on hold. <laughs> let's, let's, let's stop saving for that house. <laughs> I might have thought at the beginning this was described as a drama, and yet you've taken so much energy out of so many of the lines, like, yeah. Let's fight cocaine now. <laughs> I can imagine there's, that's how they do it. There's delivered. no drama about it. <laughs> yeah. It's just been like, oh, okay, there's pellets in me. She, oh, oh, D. I'm sure she just went, Murph, we need to fight cocaine. <laughs> Murphy, Murph, Murph. <laughs> yeah. Stop shooting the pat pats. <laughs> you know, I think it was delivered slightly differently. Yeah. But, but the same <laughs> message gets across. <laughs> right. the same message. <laughs> So yeah, then we jump back to Pablo Escobar, everyone's favourite, not a painter called Pablo. Um, not too sweet. Yeah. Not too shabby. Um, the same Border Patrol people come up to him a second time after he finds out that one of his drug shipments has just gone missing. He's like, what do you mean it's gone missing? Um, do mean? Well, so, someone... I bet, I, bet, I bet he's raging at that. He, he was, he was. And then they, they tried to arrest him. And, you know, they did the mug shots, and that's when I saw an actual picture of Pablo Escobar. And he's he's not as hot in real life, it turned out. Um, you find Pablo Escobar, the actor, more like the character in the show quite often. He, he was, and charisma in spades. Well, it, it's got a good, like, when you think of like, Pablo Escobar, it's a really cool name. I always think of, you know, Kill Bill? Mm, no. Nope. Uh, have you not seen Kill Bill? No. Nope. Really? Okay, alright. Anyway, in Kill Bill 2, when she's, like, going after Bill... She goes and sees like a um, like a Guatemalan pimp who like raised Bill, and he's like, eh. he's so suave and he's slick, but he's obviously running like a brothel full of like young girls, and he's pretty brutal. But I've seen Scarface, does that count? No, no, not really. He's pretty slick, but he's not too sweet either. Passionate. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, but, but that's what I kind of think. Like sort of very suave. You've seen Kill Bill, haven't you? Nah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. you, you, it's you, good that you use that as the. I mean, a lot of people have yeah, seen yeah, Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Okay, so that's what I kind of think of, but he comes across in that manner, like very suave. Yes, so. Very, I also yeah. figured he's, he's like yeah, yes, yeah. the central guy of like the entire show, so he's got to carry it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, he, he rolls up, they arrest him, mugshot him, and then he goes and sits down, and the guy who he opened the episode saying, I make deals for a living to, to kind of like flex and such show off his crim crims. Yeah, shows um, off his supreme top. That border patrol guy then goes, I make deals for a living. Because... Um, Give us a cut, mate. Yeah, basically, because yeah. he found out what the street value was of the coke in Miami and was like, yeah, you're not paying us anywhere near enough. 
Um, and then Escobar was like, haha, well, I'll give you a million dollars for the name of the guy who told you what the street value of the cocaine was. That's fair. So, spoilers to everyone who hasn't seen Narcos, because we'll, I'm going to discuss who that was. Me. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. I've, I've not seen Narcos. So. Spoilers to Luke. Do you want to know, or do you want to... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, alright, so... It's only the pilot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, I mean, you had to watch it three times, so I mean, what we forget? I mean, I didn't have to. <laughs> no, what happened? I mean, someone sat down at some point and said something. And then we were like, I guess we're, we're fighting drugs now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, it was a border control at some point. And so as he says that, then we, we cut to our DEA boys, mm-hmm. who are... Murph. Lo- Murph, the, the blonde protagonist, and his also mustachioed cop partner, who... Um, Doesn't have a name. No, because yeah. he's probably gonna die because it's not midway really through good. season one. So. I mean, he does. <laughs> he does have a name. I just don't remember it. Um, Murph and Smurf. <laughs> let's say that Mur- Murph and Smurf. Gargamel. <laughs> or Brady and Not Shady. I'm not sure what the oh. names are. Oh. I like Brady and Not Shady. That's good. Um, That's good. So they're setting up a sting where they're gonna pretend to be like, um, you know, they're gonna Super pretend Brady. to be buyers, and they <laughs> we find out that the missing drugs have been um, so the cockroach guy he's got his own dealer and is trying to skim off the top. Yeah. So yeah, they're gonna they were gonna buy twelve hundred kilos of cocaine for his <coughs> dealer. How do you subtly do that? Like what Slim Brady? Not Shady. <laughs> <laughs> this is if you listen back to some of these podcasts, I think I've got some gems that are just like whispered under the two of you talking, <laughs> and I'll sit here chuckling to myself in the corner. <laughs> Yeah. And then you two just continue, and I'm like, oh, that went unnoticed. <laughs> I'm just One so day I'll listen back and just sort of be like, yeah, that's right, that was in there. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea the king puts out and they're just like, they're going to try and buy some. <laughs> 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 I guess what I just, uh, well, it's For just... those of you listening, I did Scooby Doo hands. <laughs> I think it's the best way to describe it. Like Fred Walker. <laughs> Duh. 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 No, 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 no. Na, 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 na. So yeah, they were gonna. <laughs> it was a sting operation. They were gonna pretend to buy the the drugs from this dude and then arrest him at the border. It'd be a win-win. And then all out of nowhere, another teenager riding the back of a motorcycle with some kind of automatic sidearm. It's like. I can't really. Pass. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for you to. I'm waiting for you to do an Uzi sound. So I'm pretty sure Uzi is the word you're looking for. <laughs> it wasn't a pat. It was more of a scrap. Yeah, that, that's an Uzi. <laughs> it's like lot, lots of lead, lots of lead. Fine. Or all, all the. It wasn't platter. It was plomo. Plomo everywhere. Um, it's the Boston's is your guides. And it drives off. Yeah. Bon anniversaire. Is French? No, it's S. Oh, don't worry about that. So non non shady gets shot. Um, motorcyclist gets arrested. So he didn't get to say Escobar sends his regards, but he did get completely bailed out. They were like, all right, bail of two million dollars, and the next day he was like, peace out, freaks and then flew straight back to Colombia. <laughs> so that was when our protagonist is right, okay. I feel like there's a real hole in that justice system. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't figure that anyone's just going to, like, turf out two million when they didn't figure it for the narcos, did they? I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, obviously setting bails, of, like, you don't have to do it, and if you've had a guy just drive by with an Uzi. Like. <laughs> 1980s, man. Oh, yeah, and there was the whole sad harmonica as... It. As we get like lots of old footage of how it was actually kind of grim back then, and then a little bit of footage of Nancy Reagan going, "Just say no." Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt a little bit. I was like, "Oh, is this cool going?" And then suddenly, "Oh yeah, documentary moment." And then after she goes, "Just say no," um, cockroach is just standing out in the middle of a of a field of nowhere. Being like, "No, Pablo, please." Just say no. It was an advertising campaign. Yeah. Of the U.S. We war on drugs. Yeah. Okay. So, well, quick, quick point. Like, so, do you guys? I don't know if you guys know anything about the war on drugs in terms of a factual point of view. But like, the war. So Tupac rapped about it. And it I did. It Tupac, did. So he did. I mean, that's what. I know yeah, about he laid out pretty bad. Was, was <laughs> that where like just talk to Frank came from? No. Oh, yeah, I do not know anything about the war on drugs. <laughs> but, but, I'm not quite that bad. <laughs> 
Would, would you like to talk to Frank? <laughs> I'm, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so, um, no, no, so the war on drugs was basically an artificial thing that re- um, Nixon created to distract the US population. And it's had a horrific effects when the US sent troops and soldiers in South America, Colombia, Peru. If you tune out at this point, I don't blame you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you want to take this fair, that isn't that what what probably the rest of the series is going to then feature is because <laughs> you say that our protagonist is one of the troops slash his dad was a troop and then he's a cop who gets sent out to South America exactly. there's, there's nothing to wrong fight with, the war on drugs there's nothing wrong with a bit of context there's something in it it's just Nancy Reagan that's where we're at <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I Nat- did not bring up Nancy Reagan. <laughs> Nat- <laughs> the show brought up Nancy Reagan and then executed Cockroach, who right. was the Ooh. dude. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's big news. Yeah, yeah that's, that's huge. Was he, in the, was he in the forest? Yeah. He he was. So I he think was turning the stuff into cocaine. He was in a little field. And Amazing. yeah, he was like Pablo, no, Pablo, please. Episode one. Pa- Pablo, no. no. And then yeah, um, so that's when we come back up to present day, and we'll catch up with the scene where he goes. Um, God, who's my favourite character so far as well from what you've described? Not he, Pablo. No, Cockroach. Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> Pablo's still alive. He's still yeah. Don't like Pablo anymore. <laughs> Cockroach. Yeah. So, so, right, he was getting shafted in the rainforest by these deals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was just standing up for his union rights. He's, 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 he's making the product, you know, give the guy a cut. Bless him, but now he's dead. Doesn't yeah. matter, doesn't matter, Dan. Well, it doesn't matter of a knock on of this product. He's, he probably didn't have a moustache. That's probably he did not. Oh, there okay. we go. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm a little less. Yeah, yeah, a little less. <laughs> but yeah, and that's where we catch up to present day, where he's like, "Don't think of me as a bad guy just yet." And then it's the morning after, and uh, Pablo's all like, "I'll give you half a million dollars for the head of any DEA agent." And then boom, into outro. So we're all like, "Oh." Does that offer still stand? Or? I I think. <laughs> I think as it's a Netflix original, and it was... Maybe. It's based on true events? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, there's, okay, some really cool information about Pat. This is really quite helpful. So what his, uh, he was in hiding at one point from the government, and his daughter got sick. Netflix. So he burned $2 million in cash to keep, keep her warm while they were in hiding. As, well, he's a drug lord, so I could, like, what's that? Like, him just burning, like, two quid? <laughs> well, yeah. well, I think it probably still was quite a lot of money, but yeah, I suppose. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, don't tap the oh, table. Was that? Oh, was that the one point that you had? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was, that was oh, the point, point when Dan's like, like, "Oh yeah, I've got lots of these points." Just, he burned some money. Yeah, I know. That was. I was like, okay, here we are. He spent two and a half thousand dollars a month on rubber bands used to hold his money. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. If you're spending that much money on just the rubber bands to hold the money, two mil's not much to you. Yeah, it's probably not. Well, it's still two million, isn't it? I mean, yeah, for me and you, it's still two million, but for him, he's probably like, all oh, right, let's just, you know, tip. Well, yeah, I suppose if, if he's offering half a that. million for every, every agent's head, yeah, he's, whatever. He's, he's chill. Yeah, if he's just dropping two mils to get Uzi motorcycle riders out of jail. I mean, that's... Yeah, that was yeah, also a like, statement, but yeah, fair enough. I feel like you probably could have been push, push a little bit further to warm up, warm up his kid, to be honest. <laughs> Burn your moustache, mate. Do you, right. think, do you think that's, that, that classifies as negligence? Burn 10 mil. Yeah, I'm right, getting right, strong vibes. Keep them toasty. Right, if you've got 100 mil in that account, burn the lot. Yeah. Show that devotion, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, clearly he hasn't got it. 2 mil. Have you ever burnt money? Have you ever burnt money? Because I don't have fucking two mil. <laughs> you get the feeling that Luke isn't keen on Pablo Escobar. Oh, yeah. He killed cockroach. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, his earnings peaked at thirty billion. The, oh, oh, and you're sitting there like, oh, how oh, sweet he burned two mil to save his sort of thirty billion. Like he gives a shit about two mil. Yeah, he had one hundred and forty-two planes, twenty helicopters, thirty yachts to keep his cash. To be fair, I suppose you didn't really have like, like a swipe. So Why didn't he burn one of the 142 planes then? What, did you burn the plane? Yeah, burn the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably a bit awkward to bring a plane into a room to burn it to keep warm. Just saying, take off a wing. Burn that. <laughs> take off a wing? <laughs> you can strip it over the furniture on the this inside. This is roast chicken loot. Plane. You don't just snap off a wing. Metal also doesn't really oh, burn crispy that crispy well. wings, but if you've, got, if you've got, what was it, 30 billion, you can, yeah. you can figure out how to snap off a wing, run out of crane. 
step up. He had oh, he's a, he, he had, had thirty billion. Do you know like how much? How many just fun things would you do? I'm just thinking about all the hot wings I can get for thirty billion. Now you talk about wings that are hot. I think I'd buy one of those trampoline bounce houses, but then also put the trampolines like on the roof and create like layers for it, so you can like bounce off the roof and then also the floor and like just continuously like a bouncing ball. Not gonna lie, that does sound sick. Yeah, do you see what I mean? You got thirty billion. Have a crack. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in the nineteen eighties, no less. It's yeah. estimated that rats ate through ten percent of his cash. So three rats ate through three, three billion dollars. I could have done with that. Yeah. That's a lot of cash to eat through. I'm big with these rats. <laughs> Quite big <laughs> after me for all that. You can't digest paper, can you, though? So it's well, rats are unfortunate for them. Do, do you reckon they had the taste for the finer things? Well, probably after that. Oh, definitely. It's probably, uh, to, I imagine the ones that got into the cocaine were probably <laughs> pretty wired. Well, yeah, they mentioned <laughs> rats like cocaine in the show as well. Do they? Yeah. I suppose it's just plant organics, isn't it? Well, they were like, oh, well, you know, uh, we were only just finding out about cocaine, testing it on rats. But yeah. people are the same as rats when it comes to cocaine. No, there's no need for that. Well, I'm just quoting the right, show. If you had 30 bill, though, what would you do? Like, what, what, what would be something you'd be like, all right, that sounds like a laugh, I'm going to go do that? Oh. What would 30 bill? Yes. Yeah. Probably, like... No, I like, can't be crazy. Like, do, the, do the bounce house idea, but something else. Oh, that's too small, that house. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that, that's like, that's like, oh, here's a cheeky meal on the side. You've got 30 billion, you're not going to do anything crazy. I'll build myself a holiday home on the moon. Yeah, I was about to say greenhouse on the moon. What? When are you two going to the fucking moon? I've got when 30 we, billion. When we get 30 billion, I should boy. buy one of my struggles. Oh, see? Build a tube from Earth to the moon. You, you mean, no, through. space elevators aren't. That, you, that, that's that's really not an elevator, that's a staircase, mate. No, but that's the same. <laughs> they, I thought that, that would be more than 30 billion. It, or, yeah, exactly, yeah. No. You know what else I might do? I might just put like trellises on all of London and just grow like pretty climbing flowers on all of London and just be like, this is be heaven now. Is that. Have you seen Black Mirror? I've seen a lot of it. Don't be doing that. <laughs> What's your beef? The bees in Black Mirror, that's creepy in there. Are they? Are they? You've, you've not seen the bees in Black Mirror? I've no. seen real bees. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot they're like robot bees. Yeah. What? Robot bees kill people in Black Mirror. Oh, did Yeah, I, I, I'm I forgot they were robots talking about real bees, but still, that, <laughs> that's your ambition is putting plants on windowsills. <laughs> <laughs> when you say, when you say, like, <laughs> I've got thirty billion. You know what I'm going to do? Put plants on your window. What are you going to do with thirty billion? Not put plants on a window. Yeah. All right, oh, 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 stop, stop knocking people down and building something up. <laughs> I am. I said achieve the space, and you were like, nah, fuck that. Well, no, because you've got to research it. You can't. Look, like, That's more than thirty what? billion. You just said you're going to build a house on the moon. If you can build a house on the moon, I can build a tube. No, you can't. It's different. <laughs> it right, is. Vote, it's different. Vote in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Right, you can build a house, a holiday, sorry, a holiday home yeah. on Tuesday, so you're just going to travel to a house on the moon and just chill. Yeah, no, because all I need to do is buy a rocket off Musk, or just buy his entire SpaceX company, with about 10 billion of the 30. The materials to build a space habitation on the moon are already available. There's nothing that you need to research. You just put it on the rocket and you go. I hope the oxygen runs. Building a tube, oh. <laughs> building a tube from the earth to the moon. Look, 30 bills, like maybe like a third of the project. And then, you know, when, when I get a small loan of 60 bill, we can we can put it. <laughs> All right, Donny. <laughs> Someone's been reading the art of the deal. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go on track instead and say that. So, so <laughs> Moon tube. <laughs> what are you going to do once your tube connected to the moon? Are you just going to poke it? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, what do you do once you get there, Luke? How about like constructing a really big slip and slide off of like the coast of like Australia or something, like really long, so it goes way out into the ocean, then you like shoot off into the ocean and like, get killed by a shark. Well, I mean, obviously the the end of it's pretty 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 <laughs> pretty, pretty rough, but I, I mean, feel like that's yeah. quite affordable. Oh, yeah. and then also you slip on a parachute, so that way because you get so much momentum off the slip and slide and fly up. You might go unconscious, but you might not, and then you can parachute your way down, and then like float down towards what, the shark. Death. Nowhere, because there's no island now. Well, you know, you could, you Northwest. Could, what about just like a floating target? Northwest and hit Indonesia. <laughs> Slip and slide to Indonesia from Australia. Yeah. You have there been you watching too many TGF, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, 
Well, is that, is that, you're just quoting the Australian immigration system. They're trying to get them back home. I mean, they could work wow. if the government want to take over. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you get your small personal boat loan at 60 million? I feel like I can see where your headspace is at, though. Giant straw having a tube laugh. straws. Yeah. Like, having a laugh, Dan, that's where it's at. Putting plants on windows. That would be a laugh. Would it? Yeah. I love bees. <laughs> <laughs> you go outside and see bees. Oh. You got thirty bill. Yeah, all of London. You could get people called Bill and only Bill to put the flowers on windows. I'm not just talking. So you know, like you get is what a trellis is. Yeah, mate. It's, it's like them crisscrossy things yeah. they throw up walls. One just it's crisscrossy no. things. Yeah. I'm technically a climbing frame. Yeah, but for plants, it's a climbing. <sighs> it's a climbing frame for, for plants. No, you know what you could do. You can and then you just do an entire city of that. All of those plants, yeah. I mean, you get loads of bees, and then with the bees you can get bear honey. And with what honey you can get bears. But then you're going to attract bears. Yeah, bears in London. London. <laughs> Boom. London. That's the name, that's the name of the company. <laughs> <laughs> London Bears. Brill. With 60 bill. You got from bear, a personal loan. We got bear honey. <laughs> London Bears makes them... Bundon part irrelevant because the whole point is to put bears in London together. It's like bears, London bears. Yeah, <laughs> double the bears. Brighton's going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be called Burton. <laughs> um, well, I, I, can, I can see your commitment to a green eco future, Kate. <laughs> cool. And I'm going to commit a solid seven and a half. I don't know. I've never got a rating system for Marcos. Or just Netflix in general. Oh, just specifically, you need a rating system. For well, I feel, I feel, I feel like out I need of ten cocaines. How yeah. good was it? <laughs> out of ten <laughs> mustaches. I think yeah. That's a better way. Co- cocaine stashes. Well, actually, maybe just rate the mustaches. Yeah, the, co- the cocaine maybe, stashes. Yeah. Maybe, can we ra- have like? Can you rate the mustaches first and then rate the show? I'd, I'd probably rate the mustaches like a solid eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. They were, they weren't perfect, but they were really good. So they were oiled but unmanicured. No, as in like they they weren't oiled. They were like manny mustaches, mustaches. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now we must ask you another question. Oh. Hey. What's the rating of the scene? The, Don't, the stuff. Well, because I watched it three times and enjoyed it every time, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. I felt like a high was coming out. I felt like this was going to be a I mean, judge, especially judging by the scintillating dialogue. And there was scintillating dialogue. I'm going to fight cocaine now. <laughs> <laughs> I make the deals. <laughs> what was, what was the they other call me Crimmy Crim Crim. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Crimmy Crim Lord to prove he was crimming. Pap Pap. Scrap. Why does Pap Pap just sound like paparazzi? Like, that's where you want to go with that. That's what I think every time you say that. It's like paparazzi taking photos, like Pap Pap. <laughs> That's the censored version. <laughs> yeah. uh, was that from Was that from the Luke Cage or did I bring up Pat Pat before that? I feel like I, I, you've probably said it a million times before. Yeah, I, I've, 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 heard, I've heard, heard it quite a few times. I do love the word Pat. Hey guys, what other topics do we have? Well, while we're on Netflix, I feel like taking a slight break from reviewing stuff every single week. Um, so Dan, would you be able to look at something for me next week? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I, I just want to—I just want to look at more mustaches. All right. <laughs> You're not meant to hear me say these things. <laughs> Let them come unnoticed. Well, when you bring it up, not ten minutes before. Yeah, absolutely. Have, have you got any uh, recommendations? I watched a cool show at Christmas. Yeah. What was, was it? Was it the night before Christmas? I mean, that's not a Netflix original, but it was lit. No, I watched a show called Dark, which is... Oh, yeah. Like, when we watched it, we were told it was, like, Stranger Things, but in German. But I feel like it's a bit more than that. Nein. Stranger it's, Things! It's time travel, affairs, voice mine and Lippenschaft, oh. and pretty sick. So, yeah. Uh, there you go. Watch watch yeah. the first uh, hour of Dark. Shut up. Dark. Is it, is it, is, it's not, like, Zero Dark Thirty or something? No, it's just called Dark. Netflix Dark. Although I filmed Zero Dark Thirty. Zero Dark Thirty. No, I didn't. I didn't watch. You didn't have an N64. What? What are you on? I didn't know you no, watched. Perfect Dark. Yeah, the Zero. Oh yeah, Zero Dark. Can you watch films on Nintendo 64? All right, okay. It was a while. It was a while ago. It's easy to com. It's easy to com. It's when Dan's like, "Did you not experience this made-up thing I just made up?" If you get thirty billion, get an education. You might be able to afford it then. Oh man, I am singed. <laughs> it's easy to confuse an N64 game and the murder of Bin Laden, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Should I put like a trigger warning at the start of today's episode? Oh yeah, I shouldn't say murder. Um, 
You should say paparazzo. Acquisition. No. <laughs> what you should say Acquisition your death. is ending his life spaghetti. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I've got no idea what you're referring You are really struggling today, aren't you? <laughs> it's been a long day at work. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So when two children go missing, when our children go, why are the synopsis then? That's basically the pilot. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah well, we want to hear all of your crazy notes. I saw notes. the picture and it looked like a bit like a little bit like panned labyrinth. So okay, I, no, that's exciting. It looks good. It's dark. <laughs> 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 well, I'm glad, it, glad it's not false advertising. <laughs> it does look quite foreboding, doesn't it? That guy looks like a bit of a young uh, vegan woman. We are an audio podcaster. Yeah. yeah, but that guy, that one right there, do you see him? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Right there. He there, looks like a one. young Vigo. <laughs> that one. It's alright, save it for when the video editing comes to oh, full from. You've got to see that over there, look at that. Over there, that's crazy. Oh my god, oh, that's yeah, so crazy. crazy. That really is. I've oh, never seen something. You guys at home are missing us so much. <laughs> <laughs> at home? No one's listening to this. No. <laughs> no, no, listen. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Dave. I'm going to disappoint you. Yeah. I just said that. You go on about things that we can't see and then I give you something terrible to look at. My heartbreak. <laughs> see, that's the one where you video edit that and I say, oh, guys, look at that or whatever. You just throw up a really bad picture of me. Yeah. And then it's like, say so you get me back. <laughs> um, Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now he's just got to sanitise those hands with yeah. another dunk. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit of yeah. Right, so what else did you have other than Donnie Darko? Donnie. Oh, nice. What, Donnie Narco? Oh, nice. Oh, I, I thought that's what you were getting at. You're stepping up again. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. and now I'm getting ready to plunge to the bottom. Yeah, are getting a bit um, Ronnie Sarko over there. All right, Dan, what have you got to bring to the table? Other than tappage. Tappage. No, I, I watched actually White Gold the other day. Have you seen White Gold? Uh, isn't that like the name for white chocolate? Or diamond? No, I think it was the name for um, Pippin, the basketball player. White chocolate. No, I'm just thinking of milk cars now. <laughs> so what's Weed Choco about? Nice. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know the Inbetweeners cast? So it's Simon and Jay from the Inbetweeners. Exactly the same characters. Okay. But in a, following the 1980s theme, in a 1980s um, double glazing dealership. Okay. Um, and it follows. It's a comedy, but it's kind of dramatic, and um, it's it's really funny actually. I I watched the first episode, and it was really good. We ended up watching three episodes. Um, it went a bit weird. Went a bit weird off the end. It got a bit strange, but it's it's really good comedy. Um, it's a bit strange because Simon just looks like a thirteen-year-old. The guy that plays Simon. Do you know what the guy's name is? Mm-hmm. Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas. It, it, so seeing him as pretending to try and be like a thirty-year-old man is a bit strange. Yeah. It's like seeing sort of your, I don't know, your, your little brother dressed up in your dad's clothes. I imagine something. it's the same for James Buckley though as well. Does he still have other long bowl car? Yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's exactly the same character. They've got exactly the same dynamic, but they've just introduced a few extra characters around them. So you've got the guy that owns the place is just like a mouthy, like swears a lot, and then the, but the main character Vinny is just like the traditional suave salesman, you know. It's pretty. It's pretty good. It's really good. It's really worth shot. We've only watched like. Three episodes, but so we haven't seen it all. But all, it's it's really worth a shout. I don't know if you, you haven't seen any other stuff. Or. There's like a stark contrast between your dissection of a program and Gabe's dissection yeah. of a program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would like to say big differences. Yours had more detail, but then I'm kind of like remembering certain things that were said. Maybe it was longer. Disappointed him again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Gabe, I'll do better. <laughs> we can't, I can't wait for this to be on video. And you guys at home, slash office, slash nowhere, I don't know who's going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to be fair, you don't. You can watch my disappointment live. <laughs> you don't really need much either, because as long as you've seen the in between us, you know the characters they play. Oh, yeah. So you can imagine what the show's like. But it's actually pretty funny. It's a lot better than the in between us, like the comedy itself. Ooh, I'd say. Yeah, that's, okay. a, that's a strong vouch. Yeah, but you're not weird, isn't you? Um. <laughs> well, it's Dan's turn to be cut deep now. Oh, yeah, I know. What's going on with you today? Uh, Luke, Luke, did you Luke's not get my sleep last night? I'm just jumping around. I'm just having a good time. Jump around. Right. Bom, bom. <laughs> but jump around. You're just a bit sour that your tube to the moon's not going to take off. Look, you attacked it for no good reason, Dan. <laughs> well, the laws of physics attacked it, but... <laughs> not yet. Well... When, when construction's underway, we'll see. 
If you, if you know, if you, you could build, if like you could build Russian a tower, stadium builders right now. <laughs> if you could build a tower of straws six feet high, I, I would not say another word about it. But Interesting. Yeah. Is, is that all there is to I it? I don't think I'd actually put it in time, but it's an interesting <laughs> idea. <laughs> Your commitment to the cause is... <laughs> That's why he's got a 60 billion for it, or was it 30? 30. Come on, don't double my money for nothing. Yeah, I was thinking. At least make me answer like a who wants to be a millionaire question. Right, yeah, that's what he's got his 30 billion for, paying someone else to put in the effort. Yeah. Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> Still sour about the cockroach. <laughs> so what have you been up to this week then, Luke? What have you been doing with yourself? Well, what, for this podcast? Well, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. I was just here to comment. <laughs> <laughs> you just hit a light relief. Solid, solid commentary. Uh, I mean, there was one thing I wanted to talk about, which is completely unrelated to all of this, which is... Do you ever want an extra thumb? An extra thumb? Yeah, so like, YouTube recommend. well, shout out to YouTube. Um, YouTube recommended me this video, right? Someone had, someone had 3D printed, like, an extra thumb to go on the other side of her hand to use. Yeah. And it actually worked. And Katie's currently doing the awkward turtle. <laughs> it, they were, that's what inspired them to do it. They did the awkward turtle and was like, why don't I have an extra thumb to do this? So they 3D printed an extra thumb um, that's controlled by both of your big toes. Wait, it's controlled by your big toes? So you've got your normal hand with your one thumb and your four fingers. I'll just that works. And they've got their other... Well, some of us have. <laughs> not, not everyone will have. All right, so some people have got four fingers and one thumb on there. And they keep moving. Yeah. yeah. All the time. And then you strap on this extra thumb, which goes on the side which doesn't have a thumb. Yeah. And it's got like a little sensor in it, which corresponds to sensors in your shoes. Yeah. And when you move your toes, it moves the thumb. That sounds really awkward. Apparently, it's really quick to pick up, like 20 minutes and you got it. Yeah, but if you're walking, so you have... I mean, it's it's not ideal, but like as a, it was this person's like first foray into prosthetics, so I was just like, huh. Extra thumbs. I wonder what other extra stuff we can have that would be extra. But <laughs> because think about it, if you've got like two thumbs, you've got so much more reach. If, if you've got two thumbs, you can like pick stuff up. You can like do more clicking. There's all kinds of things you can do with an extra thumb. I'm trying to think of things extra you could do with an extra thumb that you couldn't do without. And I'm, I'm be an awesome goalkeeper. You could be a yeah. better goalkeeper. Think about all the sick new hand gestures you could do. Yeah. But with an extra thumb. You need to describe that because <laughs> yeah. because the audience <laughs> didn't just get to live what I live. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine the awkward turtle, but all the fingers are bent in, and you just shake the thumbs independently. It's just crazy. It's yeah, just really I, I can't imagine an extra thumb and like all the stuff you can do. So, so right. I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. This is Trump in the moonstraw idea. I mean, All right, I, I make it sound <laughs> so bad, but it got me looking at <laughs> what else, like what other projects have people done for like not replacement limbs, but like extra limbs or extra hands. What extra limbs do you want, Kate? So like, extra lar- extra alarms, extra alarms. <laughs> Commit to the worst. Commit to the just when your llama farm increases, it's the alarms. And, yeah, and, you're, and, you're, and you're, you're struggling with drums. I've had like 30 bill, I've got some extra alarms. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, they can take like 40 pellets for an extra game. But yeah, um, so I found out that some people were trying to do like extra, like extra set of arms. Thumbage. Yeah, the thumbs was like set it off. So they want to go for a whole extra arm. For two champ. whole extra arms, yeah, go go full the champ. What, are they are they going below the first set or on the back? So or? there are two approaches. There are like the doctor, like, the doctor yeah. Oct- doctor octopus. The extra arms sit on your shoulders, or there is the and I hadn't thought of this. They put the arms on your hips. Which sounds proper weird, right? I see in case a kid's running towards you and about to headbutt you and then not even knock him out. Well, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> well apparently... Or, also, or, if you're on the tube, you can just hold on to the pole to steady yourself and then read a book at the same time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Extra okay. limbs. All kinds of things. But, okay, so how are these ones controlled? Because the one with big toe, which yeah. still no sense to me, but sure. Yeah. We'll go with it. But how are these ones controlled, then? So these ones are... Side to side motion. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not quite. So the idea was like... Boeing, uh, you know, airplane people, most of their mechanics are getting kind of old. So, so they're giving them extra arms. Yeah, so they can, like, do more stuff. 
Um, Instead of just hiring new mechanics? Yeah, apparently not, not many people want to be specialist mechanics for Boeing or something. Um, but yeah, they went with, rather than um, controlled by your funds, you wear like little wrist watches, which have got sensors in, and you put on like a little headband, kind of like a GoPro. And then the movement of the three informs like a little system, which then predicts what you're trying to do. So rather than you fully controlling it, it's semi-autonomous. Yeah, so and so they program in like a bunch of responses to things you do. So if you're moving to pick something up, like the, um, the hip ones might... Um, so they copy your motion. They don't copy it. No. They, they do assistive motion. Predictive movement. Yeah. yeah. It's like predictive text, and but with day, gesture. You're going to hook that up to Alexa, and then once Alexa takes over the world, she uses them to kill us. Yeah, just yeah. strangle you in your sleep. Straight up. But the cool thing about the hip ones was they could be arms, but they could be legs. So like if you're walking along and you trip, boom, they reach out and they stop your fall. Oh, reach out. Bump, bump. But yeah. Or they could also um, function as arms as well. Or you could just get like crab claws. And walk sideways. To yeah. Look. yeah. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, that was the cool thing I found out about this week, was the idea of having extra limbs and prosthetic would, would limbs. Would you want extra stuff. limbs? I don't think I'd want extra limbs. I like the like. idea of like ones I could put on and take off. So like, if there's like a thing I need to do, like carry lots of posts, I put on my extra arms and then I can like get the door while I carry I must, it. Yeah, actually, but, when you're trying to get all the washing out the washing machine yeah, and you exactly. can't carry it all in one load. Exactly right. You put on your on, put on and take off sounded more like a jetpack than it yeah. is a set of arms. <laughs> you just put them on and take off. Have you seen my right arm? <laughs> what? Well, yeah, I thought it was kind of cool and I'm watching that space. 3D printed extra limbs. What else can you do with extra fun? Yeah, I, I'm really straight. I get, I get what you mean about reaching goalkeepers, but beyond that, what? Oh, piano playing. Each. Oh. No, but like the thing is, no, I don't think that. they wouldn't be. I don't think maybe in like but all the like classical, <laughs> all the classical instruments, they're not going to be out for that, are they? Well, you they're quite, they're quite old, stuffy organisations. You come in with an extra thumb and blow them away with an amazing concerto piece, they'd be like, "Well, you're cheating. You're using extra limbs. You know, you're not." Oh, yeah, Georgina, do it right. Yeah, that's how it goes. Graham Damaro, giving it large. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that's a very one-sided view on the piano. I mean, look at look at General (laughs) Grievous. I mean, extra extra couple of arms didn't do it much. (gasps) Think about your elite impressions, which you wanted to like pretend. Oh, that was that was that was a nice. Yeah, that's right. I'm over it. Hello. Oh, one six one. <laughs> We're a great bunch. But yeah, that's that that's been the highlight of my week is watching narcos and imagining extra funds. That's two things. What was the highlight? Yeah. <laughs> Getting popped out. <laughs> Coming in with that action to oh. highlights out the word, mate. Alright. I I think in all honesty, extra arms was the highlight. Ooh. All the all the things I can do. Nice. Nice bit of funnage. I could play several instruments at once after I learn how to play them. You, you could, you could, you could, if you, 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 you could browse multiple tabs of Reddit at the same time. Oh, sh- yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I can't, don't know why all of our words just failed now, but that's the implications of having extra arms. I, well, I, I, I don't think, I don't think I care about extra limbs, but I think extra eyes or like extra sensory or like extra ears or yeah, something. Yeah, but you can't just pop them in and take them out. What's that all about? You just put like, an extra tongue. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. Could, maybe an extra right. nose. Or whatever. Would you not rather enhance what you already have? In possible, in what way? Your eyeballs now have X-ray vision. Oh, that'd X-ray, be yeah, that'd be, like, that'd be or night vision. I, yeah, like compound eyes or something. That'd be that'd be that'd be amazing. That would be frightening. Yeah, like if you could see in mm-hmm. UV and to like, watch. <laughs> what would like a guy with like the head of a butter for Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If that, was, I, if that was, if Rather that was, than real <laughs> insects, butter free. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm still cut up by the time Ash let him go, all right, or her. So sorry. Shout out to all those people who've seen that episode way back when. You OG fans. <laughs> that was heart wrenching. To be fair, I did cry a bit when he let Charizard go into the sanctuary. Oh. The whole roller coaster ride that was Ash and Charizard. Well, this is the low point of my week. What was the high point? <laughs> let's let's uh, raise it up. Imagining the slip and slide. Yeah. 
or hey, what about, house. What about if that was a? What about if that was just a giant slip and slide into Charizard Town? Charizard doesn't exist, Dan. So don't be stupid. <laughs> I don't even know what Charizard is. <laughs> oh, that's wow! It's from yeah. the guy who's seen Kill Bill. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> for all those outrageous viewers. Comment below. I'm going to be What was that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this will be on YouTube because that's what Gabe does with it. Well, yeah, hopefully it'll be on YouTube so this week. This week it'll be on YouTube. Comment below and send yeah. down a mean tweet. Oh, that's, that's a bit hard. <laughs> also, or just, send, down just send me a Wikipedia page. Look, let's say, right, in 20 years, right, Gabe's finally uh, 10 subs. One of those subs tweet Dan a picture of Charizard hugging Ash. No context, just drop it out of nowhere. <laughs> See if he's gotten it in 10 years' time. Uh, and then that way you'll know what Charizard is. Well, the girls will time. probably go for a Pokemon face, so I'll probably figure out that time. I'm guessing no. it's some kind of monster thing. It's a pocket monster. There we go. That's what pocket, pocket monster is. Wow. Pocket monster. Uh, it's a monster <laughs> that fits in your pocket. Oh, yeah. is it? Pocket monsters. Pocket monsters. Pokemon. Right, so is that, that going to be a challenge for Dan for a future That's episode? You can afford an education that day. But... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all right, I'm clenched the fist there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, comment below on whether or not you think Moon Tube or Moon no. House. Bounce House is my, my greatest idea that yeah. I had there with the trampolines on the ceiling. Is that just because we went to a bounce house and it was absolutely fantastic? Yeah, yeah. Highly recommend. But yeah, Dan, maybe next week find out what Pokemon is and then let the viewers know. Well, I'm sure the viewers know. I think that's... <laughs> but I'll, I'll try my best. In, inform so, them what you find know. out. I've been Luke. I've been Dan. Oh, and, and, and I've been Gabe. Are we going to do E3 next week? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, tune in for the E3 special next week. E3.